Greetings, and welcome to the channel. This is Michaela from Team Retro, where we like retro games and the devices that bring them to us. This is not a handheld. This is a tablet, but trust me, it's a really good one. You're looking at the Lenovo Legion Y700, a hidden gem in more than one way. This tablet originally saw production and distribution only in China, with an international version just recently hitting the market. Even then, this is not a device that is readily available for purchase. In fact, I only became aware of this tablet thanks to members of the retro handhelds community like Mr. Petey, Dan Sharks, I Do Care, and Ghosty. You might be asking, why bother trying to hunt one of these down? Well, paired with a telescopic controller, this little tablet is a gaming and emulation powerhouse. And in this video, we're going to review this device and showcase the reasons why. So with that, let's dive in and get to work. At time of recording, the Lenovo Legion Y700 can be purchased only on AliExpress from various retailers. That said, there are a few things you need to look out for. First, you want to make sure you purchase the 2023 model. This model is distinguished by a dual camera setup on the back of the device and has stronger internals. This device typically retails on AliExpress starting at $350 and goes up from there. I would say do not spend more than $400 on this tablet if you want to maintain a decent price to performance ratio. You also might need to prepare for a bit of a wait. It took a little over a month for me to receive my Y700 and there was a time during that month that I actually thought this was lost in the mail. Now it's time to hop onto our mount and ride into spec town. The Lenovo Legion Y700 is powered by a Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 CPU and an Adreno 730 GPU. For storage, we have 256 or 512 gigabytes with micro SD card expansion. The device can have either 12 or 16 gigabytes of RAM. The screen is an 8.8 inch IPS LCD screen capable of HDR support with a 144 hertz refresh rate. The battery is a 6650 milliamp hour battery. There are two USB-C ports and they are both well placed to support telescopic controllers. The Y700 has stereo speakers tuned by JBL, it has Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, and is powered by Android 13. Unboxing this unit, you are greeted by the tablet front and center, very professionally wrapped. You also receive a USB-C cable, a SIM removal tool to access the SD card slot, and a quick setup guide that's not in English. Thankfully, we're just working with Vibes today, so we don't need a manual. Finally, there is a 45 watt charging brick in the box. It's time to take a quick tour of the device. And we'll start on the top where one of the two stereo speakers is housed. You will also find a Dolby Vision logo right next to that speaker. On the bottom, there is a second speaker with one of the USB-C ports. The left of the unit has a micro SD card slot and the second USB-C port. And the right of the device has the power and volume rockers. This tablet works best when paired with a telescopic controller, and some are better than others. Most do not connect to tablets of this size. So let's take a look at a few that do, starting with the GameSir X2S. This controller can snap open and extend to fit tablets and is a very solid controller, except for the springs, which are rather fragile. I've recently broken this controller from extending it too much, and it doesn't necessarily fit properly unless you print a 3D printed bracket. But this controller is an option 
if you require a USB-C connection and don't want to spend more than $50. If you don't like money and you have more burning a hole in your pocket, the Razer Kishi Ultra is a much more expensive option that does not require you to open it up in two pieces or expose springs. While this device is much more comfortable to hold and more form-fitting than the X2S, it's also the most expensive at $150. It's a decent controller, but you pay for the privilege. Plus, mine just randomly stopped working. I have a replacement on the way, but it won't be here until next month. Therefore, due to possible quality control issues, I can't recommend at time of recording that you buy this controller for the price Razer is asking. Which brings me to the controller that I feel at the moment is the absolute best for this tablet. That controller would be the BSP D8. This is a Bluetooth controller. So the downside is that it's another thing to charge and there may be a bit more input lag than with a direct connection. However, this controller holds the tablet in place very well and is surprisingly comfortable. You can get this controller on Amazon starting at $50. I'll leave links to all of these controllers in my video description. However, there are a couple of controllers that I'm keeping my eye on that might be a better fit for this specific tablet. The first one is by Absolute and it's called the S9 Mobile Controller. This controller will extend to fit an iPad mini, so it might just be a hair too small for the Y700. But if it fits, it could potentially be a solid option depending on how much it goes on sale for. The Kickstarter for this controller is launching soon, and I'm definitely keeping my eye on it. The second controller is the oddly named GameSir G8++++. It's so good, it has three pluses in the name. There isn't much known about this controller yet, but when it releases, it might become my new favorite for the Y700. Now that we have controllers sorted out, let's take a look at the performance of this device, starting with emulation. This device is slightly less powerful than an Odin 2, as the Snapdragon Gen 1 chip is a little older than the Gen 2 that's in the Odin, but it's still very capable of playing several different games and systems. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on the early systems because those will absolutely work as you would expect. So let's start with GameCube and PS2. Most GameCube and PS2 games will run well, so let's check out some of the harder ones to play. For GameCube, we'll start with F-Zero GX, and so far, things are looking good. So let's also try another harder to emulate game called Auto Modalista. This game is notorious for being hard to emulate, but here on the Y700, things seem to be smooth sailing. One of the best use cases of this handheld is actually playing games in portrait mode. You can use a wireless controller like the D8, but if USB-C controllers are more of your thing, you can also utilize that second port on the side of the tablet. This port will accept even phone-sized controllers, allowing you to play Tate Mode arcade games as well as Nintendo DS. DS games look exceptionally gorgeous with this tablet using the Drastic Emulator, and even Nintendo 3DS will run well using Citra MMJ at a 3x resolution. This device will also handle emulating some Nintendo Switch games provided you know how to find the proper emulators. Super Mario Wonder is running at 60 frames per second using custom turnip drivers, and even Kirby's Return to Dreamland Deluxe, a game that usually gives me a lot of trouble on lower end devices, seems to be working well here. Even though Vita 3K is in its infancy, I wanted to give some lower-end PS Vita games a shot using the same Mesa Turnip drivers. These drivers are 
specific to Snapdragon chips, so we can only utilize them on Snapdragon devices. So Geometry Wars was a game that actually gives me a lot of trouble on Dimensity chips, but here it seems to be working pretty well. Having that gorgeous 144 hertz refresh rate screen means we can also take advantage of native Android gaming by playing supported games at 120 hertz, such as Chameleon Run. This game will run with that frame rate unlocked and it looks gorgeous. Now with this device, because you are not tethered to a constantly attached controller, you can also play games with just the touch screen. You can also watch your favorite YouTubers or catch up with a well-written TV series on Disney+. Plus. This tablet is also a very capable streaming device, allowing you to stream games from your PC at up to 144 hertz if your desktop's monitor and the game you're playing are compatible. You need to make sure Moonlight is set up to stream at 144 hertz and your monitor's refresh rate is also set the same way. Before I wrap things up, I just wanna bring up a few honorable mentions the community brought to my attention and are worth talking about when considering this tablet. The first honorable mention is that this tablet has bypass charging. That means when plugged in, the device can receive power without it going through the battery, allowing for some additional longevity as far as battery life. Lenovo is also planning to bring Android 14 to this device by the end of July and is providing security updates until 2028. One more honorable mention is the device's desktop mode. While I haven't used this very much, I could see it being very handy if you plan on using this device well docked. These are all good things to consider if you are going to use this tablet as more than just an emulation device. It has the potential to be a daily driver tablet for at least a few more years. Now it's time to wrap things up with my final thoughts. And as always, we'll start with the positives. The screen on this tablet is absolutely gorgeous, rivaling the screen on the Y700 sister device, the Lenovo Legion Go. The Snapdragon processor is powerful enough to emulate most of what you would want, and you get some great experiences with native Android games as well. The USB-C ports are well-placed, allowing for controllers in portrait and landscape orientation, provided you have compatible telescopic controllers, and you could basically use this for whatever tablet needs you want. You can read a book, watch a movie, or forego the controller entirely and play games with touchscreen controls. Now let's mention some of the negatives. While flashing the international ROM wasn't that hard, it was a little time consuming. So you have to be careful what unit you end up buying. You might end up spending a little more on AliExpress to get the international version just to avoid the headache. At time of recording, it's actually hard to find a decent USB-C controller to accommodate the size of the tablet unless you're willing to wait a few months or shell out a ton of money for the Kishi Ultra. The X2S seems to be your best option, but you'll have to do a bit of 3D printing if you don't like the exposed springs, which only leaves the BSP D8 which is a Bluetooth controller. Throughout this video, I mentioned how this tablet can basically be a daily driver tablet for several years. So I'm a little surprised that there is not an option for a 5G SIM card. It makes this a bit of a harder sell considering that iPads are getting emulators like RetroArch and PPSSPP now, and an iPad mini is more readily available through regular storefronts with 5G options. If we're getting to a point where an iPad can do what this tablet can do, I could see many more people gravitating in that direction instead. However, I will tell you that for the price I paid, 
I am very pleased with this tablet and what it can do. When I find the urge to do some remote play or I just want a bigger screen and a lightweight form factor, I find myself reaching for this device more and more. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Is this a device you are considering? Do you have one? And what do you think is the best use case for a device like this? And please feel free to continue the conversation on the retro handhelds and the Steam Machine Discords where you could find me hanging out in between videos. And if you want to support the show like these wonderful people on the screen, you can do so by going to my Patreon page. Links for all these places are in the video description. But that'll do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and please be sure to like and subscribe if this video was helpful to you in any way. Every smash of that button helps the channel grow and allows me to get more content out to you. But until next time, bye for now, and don't stop believing.